Hi, my name is Gabriel Altin. I'm a neonatologist at the Montreal Children's Hospital. Today we will be uh, showcasing how to perform a long ultrasound in a newborn. This will be um, as well used in the context of research project like a partnership that we currently have with Children's Hospital of Philadelphia for the purpose study in which we will be conducting lung ultrasound in the context of congenital diaphragmatic hernia. So at CHOP, you want to place the order in EPIC for the NICU performed research ultrasound and select the lung presets. And you do not need to put the uh, study ID on the image, uh, but you do need to put the uh, lung segment that you're scanning on each of the uh, images. At the NCH, the uh, order needs to be placed under RADIMAGE purpose study. Uh, and on the machine, we need to use the purpose uh, preset. Uh, we are putting the study ID on the first image, although everything needs to be anonymized in terms of patient information. And we do need to put each lung segment on the image that corresponds to the recording. So for the context of the research, uh, make sure that the um, images are being uploaded under the patient's chart. Um, so. Here locally we use a Philips EPIC and I believe that at Children's Hospital you'll be using the Philips CX50 but you will be using the hockey stick probe which is a linear probe. Um, the hockey stick has the cursor that is basically pointing towards the end of the hockey stick which means that whatever is here or image from the tip of the hockey stick will appear where on the screen you have your cursor which on here is on the left side of the screen. So because the actual probe will be positioned longitudinally uh, towards the head, the upper part represents the cranial portion of the images. So um, anything appearing on the left side of the screen will correspond to the cranial portions and anything appearing on the right hand side of the screen will be the caudal sections or whatever is closer to the lower part of the body. On the actual acquisition of the images, it's very important to stay anonymous, which means that we will not see patient information on the actual image. So here you can see that the only thing we see is that we have the date and time, uh, we have the probe, which is the L157IO, which is the hockey stick probe, but we have no patient information. The first image will uh, contain, uh, typed with a label, the study ID of the research project. Um, the other thing that I want to showcase is that on your setups, especially on the actual machine of the Philips, we want to avoid using any kind of filtering effect. So that's why uh, the X-Res button, so here you can see X-Res button, which is the same one for the Philips CX50. Uh, you don't want this to be on. You want this to be off because this is a um, something that will filter artifact. And for long ultrasound, we actually want to generate these artifacts. The other things that are important in terms of preset is that your loops are set at five seconds of recording so that when you acquire uh, this will retrospectively acquire the past five seconds uh, of the image acquisition. Um, before I showcase on our patient Florence who has accepted to be part of the project, what you want to do is have the uh, probe uh, pointing towards up. You want to do the three quadrants on each side. So if you're imaging, for example, the right chest, you want to do the upper, then the lower, then the lateral quadrants. At CHOP, there is no need to put the study ID on the first clip. Here is the entire protocol. So we scan in the longitudinal axis with the tip of the hockey stick pointing to 12 o'clock towards the head. We divide the chest and indicate on each clip the corresponding position of scanning. And we want only one clip per lung zone, as well as one embode per lung zone, uh, with no need of repeated clips. For the right lung, um, the right upper zone is along the midclavicular line. The clip is going uh, with a sliding from the clavicula to the nipple line and the end mode um, around the mid zone of that upper lobe. The right lower anterior is along the midclavicular line with the sliding from the nipple line to the coastal margin and one end mode in the middle of that zone. And the Right lateral is along the mid axillary line 
from the axilla and sliding to the coastal margin. The same principles apply to the left lung. Um, and as a reminder, you only need to do the contralateral lung uh, for patients with CDH in the delivery room and at 12 hours of age. And you need to do the two lung fields, so the six zones, for the pre-extubation ultrasound. When you are opening uh, the actual images, you can start from the mid-clavicular line and drift down up to the nipple line. And for the lower chest, you want to start at the nipple line and drift down up to the coastal margin where we see the actual diaphragmatic uh, surface or interface with the lung. And then the last view, which is the lateral, will start in the mid-axillary line and also slide down up to the diaphragmatic level uh, that you will see on the chest ultrasound. Um, the last thing I also want to mention is that when you acquire the images, you will see your ribs as, as big uh, circles uh, on the actual image uh, because you will be cross-sectional to your ribs. So here I'm going to show Anne Florence, our baby who accepted to be part of the recording. If you can get closer. We're going to look at the chest and I want to show you the landmarks. So we have the nipples that are here. We have the claviculas that are here. And so the chest is divided. So here we have the thoracic cavity that ends here, uh, the coastal margin being here. And what we want to have is to separate the lung into six zones, the zones that are on the right side of the patient and the zones that are on the left side of the patient. We have the upper zones that are along the mid clavicular line we have the lower lung zone that is closer to around the nipple line. And then we have the lateral zone, which is around the mid axillary line for the lateral zone. So one, two, and then three. Here we can see that the chest is divided in the six zones. So we have the right upper, right lower, and right lateral zones, and the left upper, left lower, and left lateral zones. When scanning along the mid clavicular area, the right upper zone um, is a scanning which involves the probe going from the clavicular area to the nipple line, and the uh, lower zone is from the nipple line to the uh, rib coastal margin. The lateral zone is from the, axillary, the axilla to the uh, coastal margin where we see the interface with the diaphragm. Uh, at the level of the mid axillary line. So um, if for the project of purpose, you are scanning uh, on the contralateral side of the defect for the first and second ultrasound. So the first ultrasound in the delivery room and second ultrasound uh, being performed at around 12 or the first 12 hours of life, um, you would only do uh, the contralateral chest. And for the pre extubation ultrasound, you would do the two chests. So the six zones um, uh, and you would also acquire an M mode in each of these zones. In order to start the recording, the first step will be on the machine to actually provide the study of the ID of the patient. So here I'm going to go into my presets, which are the preset of purpose. And I'm going to go in my label and call it purpose ID MCH test, or it can be 01, 02, 03, freeze and acquire. So already I have my ID here. This is an example of a first slide uh, where we are including the uh, study ID for uh, the MCH site. Um, at shop, the uh, ID will uh, be downloaded at the time of the download of the images, so there is no need to put the study ID on the actual image. Um, also, um, locally at the MCH, we will need to make sure that the image is anonymized um, while at CHOP, this will happen automatically um, once selecting the lung preset. 
in order to avoid having any patient information on the actual images. Um, and the lung preset, as well as the purpose preset at the MCH will include already all the necessary uh, presets for the acquisition phase. I'm going to clear and then I'm going to label. I have here the right upper, right lower, right lateral, and then the left upper, left lower, left lateral. So I'm going to start in my label with the right upper lobe. I'm going to tame my clean linear probe. And the idea is to have the orientation towards 12 o'clock, which means longitudinal towards the head, so towards cranial. This means that the cursor is towards here, and on my screen, the cursor is on the left of the screen, so it indicates that whatever is here is cranial towards the head, and whatever is gonna be here is gonna be caudal, which means towards the feet. So I have individual pack of gel, which are clean gel. We use one per patient at our institution. And once I have the gel, I'm able to start the recording. So I'm gonna put the probe in the first aspect of the lungs. And the idea is to have five seconds. And I'm doing this and as I'm doing this, I make sure that I have, I see my ribs and I have at least three centimeters of depth. In my setup, I want at least five seconds for the loop. And so I'm gonna start scanning. So here we can see the ribs and we can see the A-lines. I'm going to acquire, we can see the pleura, and as we have five seconds of breathing in the mid-clavicular line, I acquire this where we see a lot of A-lines here. One. This is what we see on the lung ultrasound for the right upper lobe where we see the ribs and we see A-lines. I'm going to go to my second spot, which is the right lower lobe. So I then slide towards my lower chest. And then same thing, I start my five second loops and I go down on the chest up to the diaphragm. Here I need more gel. So I start around the nipple line, mid clavicular, and then I go down until I see my liver and my diaphragm. Go back up to the area of the nipple and I can go down and acquire. Here we see the clip um, in a slower motion where we slide from the nipple line to the diaphragmatic margin where we see the ribs in cross section, A lines within the pulmonary parenchyma and eventually the diaphragm with the liver. My last view, label on the right. This time I'm gonna go lateral, which means that for the patient, I wanna go from the axilla to the diaphragm. So same thing. I wanna see my ribs and I go down up to the diaphragm area. Here we see the lateral acquisition um, with the sliding also from the axilla to the diaphragm at the mid axillary line. Just to note that we only need one acquisition of the clip uh, and not multiple uh, as outlined during the video for demonstration. So I'm gonna restart, go mid clavicular. We can see the screen. We can see nicely that there's ribs and A-line. And as I'm going down, I can see the liver and the diaphragm here. And that's it. We've done a unilateral right-sided long ultrasound. We can do the same thing on the left. But for the project, the initial scans will only be on the contralateral side of the hernia. So this time, 
I'm gonna go in my labels, have the left lung upper bowl, mid clavicular, and as I slide from the clavicular area to the nipple line, I accept. Same thing, I can redo another sweep. So I see my ribs, I see my A lines, and I slide down until I get to about the nipple line. Now I will do the same on the lower lobe and start at the nipple line and I go down where I can actually see a bit of the heart so I can do little movements on the chest to see more lung tissue. And here I get to the diaphragmatic area. And I finish with my lateral where it needs to go at the mid axillary line and then I slide down up when I see the diaphragm. Back on the screen. So as we are here, we can see nicely the A lines, but if we would like to do an M mode, we could do an M mode to see the breathing pattern. So I'll just redo it. I'll do it here. So this is an M mode where I can see that there's no signs of pneumothorax. When obtaining the M mode, please make sure to maintain the label of the actual lung zone that you're obtaining the M mode on the actual image so that we're able to score these M modes.